CS2 Pro players are wrong about this in-game setting that can actually make you at home a much better player. Like most of you watching this video at home, I'm a pretty average gamer. Bog standard at absolutely everything I play and that includes Counter-Strike. But can all of that be changed with one simple in-game setting? In this video, we asked 50 professional players whether they're using the video reflex in their in-game settings and the results are pretty shocking. So I put it to the test by challenging myself on a workshop map where you have to go around and kill all the bots in a time-based challenge or to see if it actually increases your performance. Make sure stick around till the end of the video to see if you at home can actually become a better player by using this setting. But before we get into that, what does Nvidia Reflex actually do? Latency when you're gaming can be measured from many different things. Overall, how long did it take for your PC to process something before you see it in game? You want to be reducing your input lag and any delays that might happen from just your PC to give you the advantage. So in theory, if you reduce the latency, you should be able to play better without even lifting a finger or changing anything about your playstyle. This gives you the option to have it disabled, enabled or on plus boot but a lot of people in the scene, whether it's streamers, pro players, or just average gamers, don't even know if you're supposed to use it or really what it does. Nvidia Reflex puts extra load onto your graphics card and takes a tiny bit off of your CPU, which will then lower the latency or the input lag that you experience in game. The great thing about this is if you're playing a CPU intensive game like Counter-Strike, you'll notice that because of that load lifted off of your CPU, you actually might get a slight FPS increase as well. It is important, however, to note that this setting works best with Nvidia cards that are 30 series or over, such as a 36 which most of you at home should have, and you do definitely need a NVIDIA graphics card. Unfortunately, you can't use NVIDIA Reflex with an AMD graphics card. So if you do have one of those, unlucky. NVIDIA themselves also recommend that for the most optimal experience, you should use a higher refresh rate monitor like a 360 hertz. But if we're being honest, most of us don't actually have those, right? They're pretty expensive. You might still have a 144 hertz monitor like myself. Luckily for you, we tested this today using an average PC and monitor, just like the one you have at home and just like I have at home, as well as an absolute spaceship PC with a 360 hertz monitor. But before we get into these tests, do pro players actually use NVIDIA Reflex or are they completely wrong about it? So we asked 50 of the best Counter-Strike players in the world if they even have NVIDIA Reflex enabled. People that have won of the biggest events of the biggest stages all across the world that literally have thousands and thousands of hours playing Counter-Strike. Players that must absolutely know every single setting and what it does. So we obviously asked Team Vitality, who's currently ranked number two in the world on HLTV as we're currently recording this video, do they have the setting enabled? And their answer was that they had absolutely no idea whether they have this setting on, what it does, so it's time to educate some pros. G2's current IGL hooks, it also has it enabled plus boost, but had no idea what the setting even did. With some of the world's rising stars and best up and coming players not using the setting, is this potentially the one thing that's holding them back from becoming one of the best in the world? We asked Thomas why he doesn't use it, and his response was actually that in a recent Counter-Strike update, it did start creating some stutters for him. This is usually an issue with a faulty game update, so we can probably put this back on soon, but a lot of pros are holding back. Now, it's safe to assume most pro players should have top of the range PCs with the best monitors and the best graphics cards, so they are absolutely capable of making the most out of this setting as well. But why should the pros use it? We need to put that to the test. To first see the true potential of this setting, we need to do an FPS benchmark and track the latency as well, using both the average PC and monitor setup that you guys will probably have at home, as well as a pro setup that has a 4080 Super kindly sent to us today by NVIDIA, as well as a 360Hz monitor. So is NVIDIA Reflex even worth it? And is it going to make you at home play any better? As well as the pros, of course, but let's be honest, they don't need me to tell them how to play any better. We found a Steam Workshop map that really benchmarks your FPS, testing it in the most intense environments that CS2 has to offer. And at the end, we'll give you an average FPS of the way your PC is bent with the video settings you've enabled going throughout the entire map. Like essentially any other benchmarking software out there, but just specifically for Counter-Strike. This way we actually can tell if the setting's making any difference as we're running throughout the map and the FPS is going up and down, we can track the differences. So we ran this workshop map on the weaker PC with a setting off, enabled, and enabled plus boost, as well as the same on the super spaceship PC that I mentioned earlier. Now, to make these tests as fair for pro players as possible, we we actually use the same video settings on both, of course, to make the test absolutely fair, but we also use some pro-approved settings. So cheers for them settings, Max, appreciate it. So as you can see, on the average PC, the one that majority will have something similar to at home, with an i7 and an RTX 3060, there is such a small FPS decrease, but for the latency you actually gain, it might be worth using just to bump your performance. So the setting I would recommend people with the worst PC use is actually having Reflex enabled. There's a tiny, tiny FPS decrease, but a 20% increase in latency is going to be absolutely 
absolutely amazing for your performance. If you wanted to use Enable Plus Boost, that's fine, but you are going to notice a much bigger FPS drop for very little latency gain, so it's just not really worth it. The one that's going to be absolutely best for both performance on your PC and your in-game performance, you're going to want to use Enabled. But now moving on to the eSports Ready PC with much, much better specs, settings actually saw an increase in FPS and latency, which is absolutely mind-blowing. So obviously with the test we have today, we've got the 4080 Super. There's going to be absolutely no performance issues whatsoever on a PC like this. Most pros might not even have a 4080 Super, but let's assume they do for a minute. So as we can see on the better PC with a setting enabled and enabled plus boost, the latency increase on average is somewhere between 5 and 8% compared to just having it disabled altogether, which is absolutely massive. I know it might not seem like a lot, but with an FPS gain as well, what have you actually got to lose by enabling it? In our test today, we didn't experience any FPS spiking or stuttering. Obviously, we weren't in-game, but we did really stress test it. So anything you should experience in-game, we should have experienced today, and we didn't have any problems with stuttering, lag spikes, or anything like that. Now, obviously, it's not a major FPS increase. It's literally a handful of frames, but when you're getting over 500 already on a setup like this with these in-game settings, what difference does it make? If you drop five, if you gain five, it honestly is not going to be the end of the world, and you're not going to notice it. But the latency, however, that's gonna change your performance massively. We've made our suggestions for you of which one to use for your PC at home. You should absolutely have Reflex on. But if that's not enough convincing, let's find out if it actually makes you a better player. We once again used another Steam Workshop map on CS2 to figure this out. Myself and two pro players replayed a scenario over and over again, testing multiple times to see with the setting off, on, and on plus boost, to see if with the setting on, our timing would actually increase. In this Workshop map, we've got to rotate through Mirage, getting different bot kills in different locations. So we'll be testing our reaction time, and ability to consistently get those one-shot kills to make sure the timing is the best it can be. Now let's not compare my results to the pros, thank you, because we know I'm going to perform so much worse than them. And if I did beat them, that says a lot about them. So on these tests today, we used two setups, one with a super PC and a 360 hertz monitor, and another test with an average PC, average PC, and a 144Hz monitor. We'll all be using the same environment, the same video settings, and same setups, so there's really no excuse. But how can a pro perform with the setting on and off, and how can a noob or an average player perform with the setting on and off? Let's find out. Obviously, as we all expected, the biggest performance outlier was actually just from moving to a better setup, higher refresh rate, smoother in-game experience, more FPS, but we all already knew that. So what difference did Reflex actually make? We found that as previously mentioned, on average on the worst PC, the performance was slightly better with Reflex enabled. And that applied to myself and the pro players. And then with a higher end PC, which was incredible for me because I've never ever played on a setup like it before, everything felt so smooth and I was just popping off, or at least in my head. Obviously, I'm not as good as a pro. The results across the board of both PCs actually had better performance times for myself and the pros with Reflex on, as we expected. But again, there's pros out there on amazing setups that aren't using Reflex at all, which is mind blowing. So to answer the question of today's video, should you be using NVIDIA Reflex? And are pros completely wrong about it? Lower end PC users, you should absolutely have it enabled, but not on plus boost. You're probably going to drop a handful of FPS between three and five, but what difference does that make when your latency is that much better? However, pros and other players on higher end systems, enable plus boost. Every single time, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Realistically, even if you don't see a personal performance increase, we all know that pro players love their FPS, so make sure you're getting as much of it as you can by enabling this setting. And you, watching this video at home that plays Counter-Strike once a month, you also need to have it enabled. And let us know in the comments when you hit global and subscribe as a thank you. That'd be great.